Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my Blitz game number uh, 250. I was white here, kicked off with e4, and my opponent plays c5, the Sicilian defense. So we play all the, the normal moves, all the most common moves here, uh, right up until we get into the knight or variation. So take a look at that. Oh, it's his move, sorry. He attacks the pawn, I defend it. <laughs> Trying to give myself two moves in a row, that would help. A6, so that's the characteristic move of the knight orf. And now there's a lot of choices. Um, bishop e3 is an idea. Bishop e3 with f3 to set up the English attack system. Um, it's very popular these days. Um, bishop e2 um, with the idea of controlling this square and castling uh, kingside, kind of a more positional way of going. Or um, bishop to uh, c4, the fischer sozin attack. Also with the idea of castling kingside and pushing uh, the f-pawn. Or uh, even f4 immediately. Lots, lots of different ways to play. But I play the old main line, bishop g5. And um, there's a lot of theory, starting with e6, f4. And now um, the most common move here in the database is still queen b6. This is the poison pawn line. Queen b6, queen d2, and uh, queen takes b2. Very exciting game. Uh, white gambits a pawn and pushes ahead in the center. It tries to... Uh, <coughs> Uh, catch catch Black's king while it's still in the center and before it's castled. So it leads to an immediate attack. Pretty interesting play. Um, there are other ways to play. Most common these days, well, the move I see most often is just um, bishop to e7, just breaking the pin. Um, or knight bd7 defending the knight. So the pin is still on, but if I take, he can recapture with the knight. Um, but what my opponent played here was none of the above. He played knight c6. And now um, I play a move knight f3 that's not in the opening book. But you can see here, um, looking at either the opening book or the chess engine, that there's an idea that I, I uh, should have known. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, the whole purpose of putting this bishop here is to pin the knight. And uh, the purpose of f4, one of its uh, many ideas, in addition to supporting the bishop, is also to threaten uh, e5. And uh, he hasn't done anything about that threat, so I should really just follow through. So um, it might proceed. It looks like I can play e5 immediately or exchange knights first. So let's give an example. Uh, could go knight takes, pawn takes, and then e5, hitting the knight. And now there's only one move to get out of this, which is h6, counterattacking the bishop. The bishop can just uh, drop back, or it can exchange. Let's see. Let's take a look at dropping back. And then he has to block with the g-pawn. The knight is still hanging, so he's got to play an aggressive move. And then after taking the g-pawn, now the knight really has to move. There's no time to... Uh, <clears throat> is there time? He could take here. Oh, no. If he takes on um, g5, the bishop just takes back and maintains the pin. So he's got to move the knight now. And um, then just... Uh, oh, knight takes d5, bishop g3, and a bunch of different moves. But what's happened is that... Uh, Looks like uh, white has a pretty solid structure here, and, and black's uh, king side is a bit messed up, so his king is not going to be comfortable on either side of the board, and, and white has lots of space and easy lines for his pieces. So this is a, a good way for white to play, and the best way to take advantage of this move, um, knight c6. Um, so instead of that, let's go to the notation tab. I played the move uh, knight f3, just retreating the knight, and now uh, black is equalized and maybe even has an edge here. So. Uh, he can play queen b6, hitting my pawn and, and making it difficult for me to castle. He has other ideas, um, but uh, black keeps an edge in, in many of these lines. So it's important to, to play. <laughs> it's important to play these uh, moves that you've set up. Uh, you know, if you set up this pin, you need to really take advantage of it when the moment arises. Okay, but the game continues, and we stay uh, in the range of uh, about even to slightly better for uh, black. Um, and we just do some normal developing moves. Um, he comes out with his queen to check my king. Uh, brings his knight in. This is a very common motif. The queen covers here and the knight wants to come into this square and uh, he can set up a, a windmill here or maybe even a philidor mate. So I need to protect the square f2. I chose uh, knight g3 so now it's covered. And then he took my bishop. I took back with the knight. And he played h6, kicking the knight. The knight drops back. I decided to uh, place it on h3 to try and keep this uh, file open for the rook. 
with the idea of maybe pushing f5 later. And in fact, he plays e5 right now, so that sort of provokes f5. Um, I don't really want to exchange here. Let's see if the engine agrees. The engine likes exchanging. I didn't want to exchange. Let's take a look at this. f takes, e takes. <coughs> it does give me an open line. Knight f2. Well. Wow. Oh, that's White's turn to move. White playing knight f2 to try and provoke an exchange here. Um, this is a pretty even position. Black has an extra pawn over here, and I have an extra pawn over here, but this guy is kind of weak. I can never move him forward to c3 because of the advanced uh, b pawn, and this bishop is occupied. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like this position. So I pushed ahead with um, f5 trying to grab some more space on the king side here and hopefully set up a king side attack. If you can sort of cramp your opponent's uh, pieces by taking away squares that they might want to use for defense, sometimes you can use that to get a good attack going. He retreated the knight f6, and I bring my rook over, maybe with ideas of rook up and over, something like that. Also defending the um, uh, e-pawn in case the uh, bishop wants to move away. So queen e2... Um, just getting into position to come to the square um, h, h5 there. So rook ac8 and knight h5. So I was really expecting him to take. Yeah, the engine thinks he should take, but he played queen d8. Uh, also a good move, according to the engine. And now I get to take the knight, eliminating one of the defenders around his king, and then push on with g4. This was my idea. So I guess uh, with accurate defense, black is going to do well here. But, uh, you know, it's always uh, good to put your opponent under some pressure, open up some lines, try and, try and get, get, on, <clears throat> get some activity going against his king. So knight d4, counterattacking the queen, a good move. I go to g2, putting the queen on this file. And then he gets out of the pin by king h8. Maybe uh, that's not the most accurate way to play. His advantage suddenly drops there. The best way to defend, queen h4. or d5. Yeah, I thought d5 was pretty interesting here. He's got um, the bishop looking down this diagonal, and it could be very unfortunate for me <laughs> after d5. But I could take and then put my bishop on e4 and defend that way, so it's not an immediate threat. Queen h4 is interesting too, but I would still push on with g5, I guess. But maybe it allows him to meet g5 with a h5 or something like that. Let's take a look at this queen h4 line. Queen h4, g5, and then um, h5 is a move. Uh, also, rook f d8. Not afraid of having me open up lines. Let's say, um, yeah, let's say he moves his rook, and I just take. He's going to take back with the queen, and um, yeah, maybe I just don't have enough force here to break through. I need to reposition my knight this way. Still. Uh, I, w I wouldn't be unhappy with this position. I'd, I'd be willing to play this. <laughs> okay. Um, um, just looks a little bit dangerous to me. Although, uh, you know, computers are good at finding uh, most accurate defenses. So uh, it's not so easy for people to actually find the most accurate defense. So after king h8, I push ahead with g5. That was my plan, try and open up some lines. And uh, he took. And after this, actually, I have a slight edge now. Um, and now uh, he makes a mistake. He should play king g8. I have a threat of uh, queen here, check, and uh, queen here, checkmate. But uh, he can block with the queen, so he has time for other moves. d5, king g8. Um, but it looks like uh, white has an edge in all these lines now, which is an interesting shift from the position earlier. Okay, but what he tried is something that doesn't work at all. He tried knight takes uh, f5. So if you want to, um, uh, let's erase the other lines. Let's erase these two lines. If you want to have a, a brief tactical quiz here, this is the one opportunity in this game. If I play the move, the uh, engine will give the answer away. So uh, what's wrong with the move knight f5? It's taking advantage of the pin, of course, so it, it appears that I can't uh, take that knight without losing my queen. So what's wrong with that move, knight f5? Okay, um, pause the video if you want uh, <clears throat> some time to think about it. He played the move, knight f5, and now I have a couple of good responses. The, the move I played was just queen h3, just 
getting out of this pen. But uh, of course the pawn is still pinned because the, the king is there. So more than getting out of the pen, what it's doing is it's attacking the knight. So the knight is now doubly attacked and only defended once. If we ignore this pawn, because it's pinned, it can't move. I still have two pieces attacking the knight. So, um, so what can he do about it? If he plays queen h3 to queen h6 to block the check, then I take the knight. And if he plays knight h6 um, to block the check, then the rook takes the queen. So uh, he's just losing in this line. Uh, let's back up one move. The engine says there's another way to play this, which is even more interesting. Oh, about the same. Uh, they, they were rated slightly better. This one I didn't think of, though. Bishop takes a6. Um, it's another idea on the same thing. When you've got the piece that's attacked by a pawn, and that pawn is pinned, um, if you can just distract the defender of the pawn, then you can just uh, win a piece here. So can the bishop maintain the pin? Um, how about if the bishop just goes to uh, the square? Oh, if the bishop moves, then I'm going to grab the rook. I guess that's the idea. Bishop takes c8. And now queen h3 check, and it's uh, it's all over. Okay, so that would have been an interesting way to play. Or if he takes the bishop, uh, then you can take the knight right away. Uh, even better than pawn takes is, uh, let's back up is uh, rick takes. Yeah, pawn takes is actually a mistake because of my exposed king. So rick takes is the way to go. <coughs> and uh, then the queen has to move, but I'm a piece up here and the, this pawn is still holding up the center. Okay, so uh, that's another way to play. I played, um, after knight f5, I played queen h3 check, and this is also winning. And uh, so he blocked with the queen, I grabbed the knight, he traded queens, and then um, after this move, rook f6, he just tried to harass my pieces to see if he could catch them off guard. But basically, I'm just a piece up. He has a pawn, and I have a, a knight, and uh, so I'm going to go on to win this in a simplified position with reduced material. Shouldn't be too hard. So he resigned, and uh, so I thought that was an interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon. Oh, leave any comments you have in the section below. Bye.